the largest satellite of Saturn and the second largest satellite in the solar system, after Ganymede, is Titan. Over the decades, we've been learning more and more about this satellite, and they are constantly replenished. So what do we know about Titan? About this world, more than a billion kilometers away from us, is life in one form or another. Really possible there? Let's try to find answers to these and many other questions. So, Titan is a cold, icy world with a surface temperature of minus 170 degrees Celsius, hidden by an orange, hazy atmosphere. Titan has a radius of about 2,500 kilometers and is more than one million kilometers away from Saturn. It takes about 80 minutes for light from the sun to reach Titan, making sunlight there about 100 times fainter than on Earth, which tells us not at all a resort destination. In 15 days and 22 hours, Titan makes a complete revolution around Saturn and is also in synchronous rotation with its planet, meaning it always faces the same side of the planet. Since Titan rotates roughly along Saturn's equatorial plane, the seasons there last more than seven Earth years, and a year equals 29 Earth years. Titan's internal structure is not fully known, but one model based on data from the Cassini mission suggests that Titan has several layers. The innermost layer is a core of silicate rock, about 3,000 kilometers in diameter. The core is surrounded by a shell of a special type of water ice, which is only found at extremely high pressure. This high pressure ice is then surrounded by a layer of salty liquid water, on top of which is an outer crust of water ice. The surface is covered with organic molecules that have come in with rain or otherwise deposited from the atmosphere in the form of sand and liquids. The atmospheric pressure on Titan is about 60 higher than on Earth. To feel it, you have to go down to a depth of about 15 meters into the ocean. That's how you will feel on Titan. So it's not very comfortable. This is true because the satellite is less massive than the Earth. Its gravity does not hold the gas shell so strongly. So the atmosphere extends to a height 10 times higher than the Earth's, almost 600 kilometers into space. Titan's dense atmosphere is mostly composed of nitrogen, about 95, and methane, about 5, with small amounts of other carbon-rich compounds. High in Titan's atmosphere, methane and nitrogen molecules are split by solar ultraviolet and high. Energy particles accelerated in Saturn's magnetic field. Parts of these molecules recombine to form various organic chemicals containing carbon and hydrogen, as well as nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, and other elements important to life on Earth, which is a very curious metamorphosis. Some compounds formed when methane and nitrogen are broken down and recycled create a kind of smog, a thick orange haze that makes Titan's surface hard to see from space. Some of the heavy, carbon-rich compounds settle to the surface forming a kind of sand on Titan's vast dunes. And methane condenses into clouds that sometimes flood the surface with methane rain. The only mystery for researchers so far is where does the methane itself come from? Since sunlight is constantly destroying it in Titan's atmosphere, there must be some source of replenishment. It is highly likely that the methane could have been spewed into the atmosphere by volcanoes ejecting cooled water instead of molten rock lava. During the Cassini probe mission near Titan, it was possible to obtain images that recorded emissions of a cold substance, presumably liquid methane, into the satellite's atmosphere. At the same time was discovered Mount Doom, the highest mountain on the satellite a height of 1,600 meters, which in all likelihood has a cryovolcanic origin. Two light formations of temporary nature were also discovered, which are the result of the activation of cryovolcanoes that spewed water, ammonia mixture with hydrocarbon admixture. The thickness of ice 
flows on Titan reaches 200 meters, which is possible due to the high viscosity of cryomagma, comparable to the viscosity of basaltic lava on Earth. But the amazing thing is that in just a few years, huge areas of the landscape shifted during this time by about 30 kilometers. Since Titan is always turned to Saturn on one side, this shift can be explained by the fact that the icy surface is separated from the main mass of the satellite by a liquid layer, an underground liquid ocean, which is most likely associated with the activity of cryovolcanoes on Titan. And one of the sources of energy is most likely a powerful tidal influence of Saturn on its satellite. As for the underground ocean, it is assumed that the water contains a significant amount of ammonia, about 10, which acts as an antifreeze for water and keeps it from freezing. Based on the gravity map of the satellite, it was concluded that the liquid in the subsurface ocean of Titan is characterized by increased density and very high salinity, which includes salt containing sodium, potassium, and sulfur. In addition, the depth of the ocean varies in different areas of the satellite. And yes, hypothetically, there could be something living in ammonia. It's a kind of alternative biochemistry, which explains the possibility of life forms partially or completely different from Earth's. Differences include replacing carbon in organic molecules with other atoms, or replacing water as the universal solvent with other liquids. So don't be surprised if we find a hypertrophied snail with a titanium shell. There are clouds on Titan, but they are quite small. They can cover no more than ones of the surface, although this value sometimes reaches eight. In addition, a huge cloud was recorded at an altitude of 40 kilometers above the North Pole of Titan. This formation consisted most likely of ethane, because only ethane is able to condense at this height. Clouds made of a mixture of methane and organic compounds were also recorded. It is believed that such clouds can make methane, ethane rain or snow, depending on the temperature. Yes, Titan is harsh in any season. Titan's surface is one of the most Earth-like places in the solar system, albeit with much lower temperatures and a different chemical composition. It's so cold here, that rocks form from water ice, like icicles, but licking them is strongly discouraged. Titan's surface is divided into several light and dark areas with clear boundaries. In the area of the equator, there is a famous light region the size of Australia called Xanadu. Also, in the equatorial regions, there are vast areas of dark dunes consisting of hydrocarbon grains, which can resemble coffee grounds mixed with icy sand. Cat scratches is the name given to long parallel rows of dunes stretching for hundreds of kilometers in the direction of prevailing winds, west to east. Images show that Titan's ice dunes are huge, reaching on average up to three kilometers wide, hundreds of kilometers wide hundreds of kilometers long and about 100 meters high, a great place for giant worms to stay. Dust storms are frequent and the different seasons on Titan can affect dramatic changes in the speed of the local winds. It is currently believed that the fastest winds on Titan blow near the equator, the exact speed of which has not been determined. But presumably, for only 30 Earth hours around the entire satellite. During this time, they carry streams of warm air from lower latitudes to the poles of Titan. Perhaps the results of further research will help to find out what really happens on Titan and what weather conditions are formed there during different seasons. Titan has few visible impact craters, meaning its surface must be relatively young and some combination of processes erases impact marks over time. Just as on Earth, craters are erased by the relentless forces of fluid flow, wind, and plate tectonics. These forces are present on Titan in slightly modified forms, according to data and computer calculations. The seas on Titan are mostly composed of ethane and methane. 
There may also be propane and small amounts of hydrogen cyanide, but nay, also be propane and, and acetylene. You know, opening a chemical factory would be no problem. Animations from the photos show periodic changes in the coastline, which is attributed more to the waves. As for the potential for life on Titan, it is probably there rather than completely absent. We know for sure that Titan hides an ocean of liquid water mixed with salts and ammonia beneath its surface. And this discovery of a global ocean of liquid water adds Titan to the handful of worlds in our solar system that could potentially contain a habitable environment. Yes, it's not suitable for life as we know it. But do we know everything? In addition, rivers, lakes and seas of liquid methane and ethane could also serve as habitable environments on the surface, though any life there would be very different from life on Earth. Despite the fact that over the years, we have learned quite a lot about this amazing satellite. But having received new knowledge, more questions were born. The variety of features of Titan's surface is surprising and fascinating. Many people compare it to the Earth. Indeed, its similarity in the form of relief, the presence of seas, rivers, dunes, its atmosphere, which protects from radiation, finds common features with our planet. It is at the same time a world very similar and completely different from our Earth, a unique place in the solar system that requires further study.